Today, the Mexican peso got depreciated, and this was mainly due to the foreign uh, information, exogenous information, rather than internal issues, including the result of the presidential election and the rest of the elections took, that took place in Mexico. Yesterday, we had elections for president in Mexico, the, US Con the Mexican Congress, uh, including the Senate, as well as many state governorships and many congresses in states and local governments, along with the, their auditors, which in, in the case of Chihuahua, we have to elect one. Um, the result, in general terms, went in favor of the leftist party and the leftist candidate, Andres Manuel López Obrador, who has been feared by the markets in general terms, but who also was already uh, one way or the other assimilated into power by the market, at least at the beginning of his term. And the issue is the following. He was, uh, during the whole campaign, uh, a leader in the, sur in the service. And this uh, brings the situation that markets began assimilating that situation along the rest of the volatility set that we have and have been discussing here at Solar Negotios. Now, the result in general terms and during the whole weekend and specifically Sunday when it was election, we lived a situation in the foreign exchange market without turbulence, without volatility, very stable. So in principle, the Mexican peso, if no foreign elements were included in the volatility set, we will have a very stable peso from the last days and until today. But the truth is that we belong to this world where we have volatility elements from the foreign, uh, from abroad. And the truth is that those elements impact more in Mexico rather than internal issues, at least for now. What happened, in, 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 uh, what happened abroad? Well, basically, Donald Trump from the US made some tweets, made some statements, and they were in terms of this trade war that we are living in. They are keep doing their threats or their actions in terms of tariffs against now autos and the European Union is saying and stating that they will reply with tariffs to the US. This following July the 6th, we have a due date to begin the second set of sanctions from the US to China in terms of tariffs for $34 billion. And if there's no negotiation in between, then we will have those in action and we will begin seeing how this trade war is increasing. And that increase implies importing inflation like countries in Mex like Mexico. Uh, will mean more barriers worldwide for trade. Will mean deceleration potentially sooner or later. At least in Asia, the last figures for exports are showing a decrease. So this is not good, not good news for anyone. And that is what is happening. But this also increases the value of the US dollar and it will hurt the US in terms of the trade balance. The uh, Bloomberg dollar export index increased 0.55%. Uh, other indicators uh, imply the ISM manufacturing 60.2 points when it was expected 58.5, so it was better. And in Germany, there is political instability given immig immigration issues where were kind of negotiated by Angela Merkel with Emmanuel Macron uh, last uh, a couple of weeks ago, and suddenly, well, she finds great deal of problem in Germany. NAFTA is, is Trump is proposing to postpone negotiations until November, which implies certainty for now and great uncertainty for the near future. But one way or the other, he mentioned between lines that he knows, he's not pretty comfortable with what they have right now negotiated, and, and that's why he's postponing it to November, but in, in, in the middle we can read that he has many things like accepted or that could be assimilated. So maybe we're in a, in a near future for the for the NAFTA negotiations. Now, Mr. Trump already talked with uh, Mr. Manolo, Andrew Manuel López Obrador and they, took, and, and they talked, at least Mr. López Obrador stated that he mentioned that the, his intention to include immigration policies between NAFTA to implement a situation where we can bring back Mexicans into Mexico or at least keep the ones we have right now in, the Mex in, in Mexico by increasing their 
like better jobs and salaries, and that will avoid immigration. And that's kind of a good way to begin negotiations with this guy, you know. So we'll see what happens. Is to be interpret interpreted. Uh, oil went down. There's a great deal in, in the hydrocarbon markets. We will have to discuss this further to, in, in the following days. But the truth is that it is affecting the U.S. Uh, the Mexican peso. And back of the Mexico's two news currency hedges were demanded in a very little volatility position. And family, family remittances were high in May, so it's good news for in terms of the Mexican peso specifically. Well, this is the news for it. We'll keep talking about this in the following days. Thank you very much for your attention.